He's missed it. This could be a free ball oh. as well. Miss. In the free ball. Oh, it's not only a free John ball, Higgins the ball. flick off the brown has left him with a pot, but of course, at first it looks good, but those two reds aren't pretty. Yeah, but if he can get on the colour off the brown, and he's trying to get over into the spot that you mentioned, and he's come up a bit short. If that runs a bit further across the table, one. he would have had the angle to get to the reds. He's going to have to leave a tricky one along the cushion, and would you want to be taking that on at this stage? Yeah, any angle bar straight, eh? Where is he? Straight. Be interesting to see his next choice of shot. Well, he has created quite a bit of angle there. Now, how does he play this? There's two ways of playing this. You can play it with a little bit of pace, get up the table. Eight. If he pots it, he can put Mark in all sorts of trouble. Do you try and drop it in and get nicely on a colour? He's 17 points in front. No, but he's trying to cover it. John Higgins. He played it in Eight. such a way that he tried to cover it, but I don't think he has, has he? Well, he's covered it, but I think he might be able to pop this off the cushion. <laughs> if anybody can pull this off, it's Mark Selby. Yeah, great knowledge of pool and the angles on the table. We've seen that this evening already, but should get this. Now, One. I don't think he's got an angle, Dennis, to get back on this red. I don't. I think he's dropped in a place where he can't do it. Yellow looks like it's straight, no good. Too much angle on the blue. Unless he plays the blue and plays a cannon on the red to try and knock it out, but then you re you've got a bit of luck there. What about bringing the green into play and getting the snooker. Yeah, might be his, uh, his alternative. He's looking at the brown. I'll take some cue action. He's got so many choices here. But I think if he can bring yeah. the green into play... Yeah, looking it. at this table, I think you're dead right. Green ball. Mark Selby. So the 16 point advantage you, doesn't mean a great deal because the colours are all now available. Not quite a snooker, but boy, does he need a thin edge here. Oh, well, that's a fabulous shot. Well played. You know, with Mark Selby and his knowledge that he could quite easily hit the cushion and possibly get the snooker behind the black. Yeah, he's just got to make sure that he gets the red thick enough that the cue ball doesn't get lost, but not too thick that it hits the black with the red, so... Not totally straightforward, this one. Yeah, that's the problem. You hit the black. Where is the black? It's over the pocket. But the red's not. <coughs> it's not a straightforward safety shot here. I'm just thinking, do you take this on? Big shot. I'm sure John will suss something out if he wants to play a safety, but there's nothing straightforward. Well, if there's no safety shot on, you have to have a go at it. Oh. Well, the last 
place I thought before. he would take it on to was the middle pocket. I never thought that that was cuttable, but... Unlucky to hit the yellow and go into the pocket, so one good pot from Mark Selby, and he could still be in this year's Masters. The defending champion has battled so hard. Well, this is a shot you'd be setting up in practice and playing for hours in the club, but this is where it matters. Well, it's a good pot, but where he didn't want to finish was bang on the, the ball cushion. Unbelievable where these things can happen. That, that bounces another three or four inches. It's probably game over. Trying to get all the way around the angles yeah. here, so he needs to pull out an absolute cracker here. I tell you what, though, Three. Dennis, that is a very big second prize he's just had. I mean, you could hit that blue and finish anywhere. He's finished in a spot yeah. where if he knocks the yellow in, he's definitely going to be on the green. That wasn't the worst kiss I've ever seen. Not far wrong there, John, because if he misses the blue, he, he's going to be over the left side of the table. Boy, the tension here at the Alexander Palace is quite something at the moment. What a conclusion to this quarterfinal. Well, everything's happening. Five. The yellow wobbled four or five times. It's dropped in, but because of the way he potted it, he hasn't finished on the green. Seven points the difference as we show you this yellow. Well, what else are we going to see? Yeah, look for all the world if he potted the yellow he had to be on the green there but hasn't turned out that way yeah good safety <laughs> definitely got the snooker Marcel be five once again not about hitting this can you get it safe and it's the swerve shot Well, it's knocked the blue awkward, it's knocked the pink awkward, but the pink is not absolutely safe, and he's got a chance here of the green, but I think the blue come to John's rescue there. Yeah, that's a massive bonus. Yeah. <coughs> have to be some shot, I mean, the green. Under the circumstances, is a good shot anyway, but to get position bang on the brown to flick the blue out, asking a lot. Overcut it. Oh, is he going to be hampered? Well, the green won't pass the brown. Now you see it. He's going to play the slow roll behind the brown. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame him at this stage. Uh, a, little bit of, a little bit of twitching going on to play that shot. To... Yeah, what was I thinking of? <laughs> oh, this is a good shot.
Not the best shot that John's ever played. And it's all about the brown. I fancy him to pot the green, but how is he going to finish on the brown? That's the question. <coughs> yeah, where this is finished, he'll do well to get on the brown. Well, he has, and he, if it pulls up, he's got an angle to move Three. the blue. I mean, that is just a brilliant shot. I don't know whether he can move the blue, but that was a brilliantly controlled shot on the green. Well, have a look at the scoreboard. If he pots the brown, it's five frames all. It's 69 points each. You can't get any closer than that. What a quarterfinal. Just over four hours of fascinating snooker from these two great players. Is he looking at the leaving a double? Well, there's all sorts of things he could do. He obviously hasn't got the angle to cannon the blue out. Yeah, it's in a really awkward spot for removing that blue. He's having a look. He's, is he looking at the back double? <laughs> if he's playing that, he's looking at the back double and playing the white up and down the table to get on the pink because when he pots this, the situation is both players need blue and pink. Seven. Well, you won't be playing the back double now. Cross double, maybe, but <laughs> I don't think so. He's well, surely going to play safe. He's looking at it, and what? It, see, th there's he's pointing the cue. He's looking at doubling that and screwing off the ball cushion to get over behind the yep. pink. What a shot this would be to pull off. If he pulls this off, it'll bring the house down. This to keep himself in this year's Masters. Is he on the pink? What a shot he's played there. 12. Oh, my goodness. What a shot that was. Now, Dennis, do you play this pink in the middle pocket? What a shot on the blue. I fancy the top pocket as we see the white come round. He's looking at the angle to the middle pocket. He's looking at the angle to the corner. He's going for the middle. Here we go. He's won three frames in a row, and what a finish. Mark Selby still in this year's Masters. He beats John Higgins six frames to five. I'm delighted to say that Mark Selby joins me right now. You left out pretty late. Yeah, I know. I mean, I started off great, uh, very similar to the first match, really. I started off really well before the interval, and then after the interval, I seemed to fall asleep, and, and John played a little bit better. But you said pre-match that in order to beat John Higgins, somebody like Higgins, you have to take your chances and be clinical, and you weren't that halfway through the match? No, not at all. I mean, like I say, the first four frames I seemed to be very clinical when I had my chances, and obviously, hence why I was 3-1 up. Uh, after the interval, I had plenty of chances to, to go on and win the match a lot easier, and uh, obviously missed a lot of balls, and John seemed to capitalise. How tough is it to play somebody like John Higgins? Because pre-match he said that being the underdog is suiting him at this year's Masters. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's one of the greats of our sport, so it's always tough. And, and more times than not, every time you go out to play John, you need to, you know that you have to be at the top of your game. And fortunately for me today, it was one of them days where I wasn't at the top of my game and John wasn't either. It was a great relief at the end, the fist pump, that said it all. Yeah, I mean, obviously more just relief than anything like you say, because uh, I had plenty of chances to probably win the match easy and John will probably say the same from 3 all. Uh, and it was just a matter of just crawling over the line, really. Sean Murphy's playing well. How are you getting on against him these days? Yeah, uh, Sean's obviously seemed to be playing back into form. Uh, I think I played him in the final of uh, the, the UK uh, last year. So, obviously, it's going to be another tough game. Obviously, we're great friends, known each other for many years, obviously growing up through the junior ranks together. So, it'd be nice, obviously, to play Sean in the semi-final.